Okay, as uh, probably only a few of you are aware, the racing rules changed as of two weeks ago. Can you watch that? She's got her book, yep. So, if you have a book that looks like this, next, we got a new one. We always alternate between blue and red. This is a red quadrennial. So if I have one from 2000, I'm okay. Yeah, it'll look red. Yeah. Yeah. It won't work, but... Um, number of changes in the new book. One of the big ones, which is very important that you pay attention to, is that there's a lot more emphasis on room and mark room and who gets it and how. Who has right of way and that you have really a harder line on the boats that have right of way. The main changes, there are no real game changers, but the changes are to really plug holes in the old game that most of you probably didn't even know existed. <laughs> but the rules geeks, we kind of knew where they were there. So it's sort of important to just follow along with it. My basics are very simple. Don't hit anyone or anything. The rules are a shield, not a weapon. And if you take that as a basic attitude going around, you stay out of trouble. One of the changes in the rules is that the definitions have been moved from the back of the book to the very front of the book. Logically, that makes perfect sense because you can't understand the rules unless you read the definitions. Now you get to read the definitions first. As I said, the definition of room is very important and it's one of our fundamental things. It's been rewritten. So room, the space a boat needs in the existing conditions, including space to comply with our obligations under part two and rule 31, while maneuvering promptly in a seaman-like way. You're entitled to room, but it's a vanishing thing. If you don't respond promptly when you're not the right-of-way boat, it vanishes pretty quickly. The change here that's very important is it now is also the room that you needed when two boats are approaching each other, port starboard, or room at a mark, which is rule 31. So it really gives you a slightly bigger envelope and defines it a little better than we used to have. <clears throat> Keep Clear has been broken into two parts now. And this is one of the ones that you didn't know about. So a right-of-way boat, as long as they're able to sail their course without having to take avoiding action of a Keep Clear boat, they're fine. The other boat is kept clear. If two boats are overlapped and the right-of-way boat can change course in both directions without immediately making contact. This boat is kept clear. Here's the one you didn't know about. Port starboard. Coming down, get that close together. Starboard wasn't allowed to alter course because they'd break rule 716. <laughs> Alan knew it because he got caught in that one at a team race event. But now, here's the right-of-way boat. If they can alter in both directions without making immediate contact, this boat is kept clear. If they alter and this boat fails, they blow the test. Eric, yes, sir? Is proper course defined as heading to the mark or port? Sail Proper course is the fastest way you can sail around the course in the absence of all other boats. So, if you took everybody away and you were just doing like a windsurfing speed run, it'd be how fast can you get around the course because you don't have any other boats in the way. Same thing with proper course here. It's the course you'd steer to get around the course fastest. So proper course on the downwind could be heading like 30 degrees. Above. Yep. And we'll get to that when we get to the downwind. Um, for those of you who haven't been to my seminars before, I go through the basics and then I'll take us around the course and be introducing rules as we go through. 
Um, basic principles has got to change to it. It always addressed sportsmanship, adherence to the rules. This year, they've added minimizing the impact to the environment. And there's a brand new rule called 55, where if you intentionally discharge trash into the water, I'm still waiting to see what that definition is going to be, but we already know from one case already heard, flicking a cigarette butt into the water is discharge of trash and a boat's been protested for it, upheld and tossed. So we think that's going to change a lot of people's perception of how they're sailing. If you toss an apple core into the water, it's fully biodegradable, but it's still trash. So you have to think about it. The fundamental rules haven't changed. Um, rendering assistance, fair sailing, yelling starboard when you're on port, for example, cheating. You have to accept the rules, which involves the racing rules, the equipment rules, the class rules, national prescriptions, the notice of race, sailing instructions, and anything else they hand out in the regatta are all part of the rules. The decision to race is still purely yours. You put yourself at risk, you can't come back to the race committee. This all dials back to Fastnet in 79, where uh, 86 boats finished out of 303, five boats sunk, 125 people rescued, 15 sailors and three rescuers died. And then a bunch of people decided to sue the race committee because they should have known that the, this major storm was gonna come when they really had no idea. And we're not allowed to use drugs. And yes, alcohol is considered a drug, though not performance enhancing. So, <laughs> something to consider. <laughs> More Viagra. <laughs> so, the basics. One of the things with the basics now, two boats are racing along, A boat with a tug, tug with a barge, excuse me, is going along. Racing rules don't apply. You have to go back to the rules for avoidance of collision at sea or the inland sailing rules here in the U.S. And they'd have to keep clear. You can be protested if you fail to. If this boat has to take avoiding action from race boats, you can be protested for having violated that. If it's a cruising boat who's not racing, they're on starboard, you have to keep clear of them. You can ask nicely, could you get out of the way? But if they have to take avoiding action to avoid boats racing, you can be protested for that as well. Sorry, Eric, could you do that with just the floating dock on its own? I mean, because that's obviously immovable, but the tug will, will move. So with same guys coming down, well, in this case, it's an obstruction. Oh, okay. If it's sitting on an anchor, and we'll get to obstruction shortly. So, Eric, also you're showing two boats with that movable obstruction bank. Um, it could be a single boat. Right, but I'm just saying yeah. you'll later go into how two boats together will handle that. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, one of the changes is in how right of way is worded. It used to be worded that a boat has right of way when another boat is required to keep clear. That's been changed to be a lot stronger in saying a boat has right of way over another boat when the other boat is required to keep clear. It's making it very solid. You've got to stay out of the way. Basics remain the same. Port starboard. Ports the keep clear boat. Windward leeward, windward's the keep clear boat. Ahead and astern, you can't run over the guy ahead in front of you no matter how much he deserves it. Yeah. <laughs> so. We're not gonna talk about yeah. things, right? Um also when you're tacking, you're tacking from the moment you're head to wind until you're on a close hold course. So for that time period, from there to there, and the sails don't have to be full. The boat just has to be on a close hold course, then you've completed your tack. When you have two boats that are tacking, 
the one to the port is the keep clear boat. Two boats tacking ahead and astern, the astern boat's the keep clear boat. So if you tack right on someone's bow, you get in and you now and you and you've completed the tack and that person hits you from behind, the person who hit you is wrong. If you were both tacking at the same time. Oh. Okay. Ah, no, we're not letting you off the hook on <laughs> Rule 15 yet. You can't yet. Really open that one. <laughs> now, there's been a change in how contact Rule 14 is written. So, one, the right-of-way boat doesn't have to anticipate. If this boat's sailing along, this boat's coming in, they don't have to anticipate that this boat is going to fail to keep clear. But when it's obvious that they are not going to keep clear, then they have to take avoiding action to avoid the collision. If they try to do anything to avoid the collision and there is contact, but no damage or injury, this boat has broken Rule 14. However, they will be exonerated, meaning that we won't penalize them, and it shall be exonerated. So the protest committee doesn't have a choice on that. If there is damage and injury, then rule that particular safety gets turned off, and then a hearing has to be determined. If you do like David does and tack in front of someone who has right of way, you've now gotten right of way. Once you have right of way, you have a limited time where if this boat tacks tags you immediately, you tack too close, you failed to keep clear. If a few seconds goes by and they've had the opportunity to get clear, then you're fine. If you're sailing along and this boat tacks in front of you, you acquired right of way through the actions of someone else. You're not required to have to keep clear of them. They're required to keep clear because they put themselves in the harm's way. So the difference in 15 is if you put yourself into right of way, you have to keep clear for that time period, giving them a chance to react, room. But if somebody else gives you right of way, you don't have to do that. You don't have to anticipate that somebody's going to plant themselves right in front of you. But you have to avoid collision. You have to still try to avoid right. collision, if at all possible. You said there are contact made, but no injury and no damage. Under but Rule 14. Is there still a penalty term? Not for the right-of-way boat. Right, for the other person. For the other person, oh yeah. <laughs> and is it a 360 or a 720? It's a 720. Other than, in our case, for the winter sailing, we only have the one turn penalty. Because of the, Excuse me? Because of the SI. Turn. Yes. Um, rule 16, altering course. You can't alter course in such a way that another boat can't keep clear. So two boats are sailing along. He spins up fast so that this boat doesn't have time or room to react this boat's wrong. So, so can you go, so you put three boats there, because last week <laughs> there was you, you were yellow, mm -hmm. Matt was blue, and I was green. Yes. And so the race is starting, we're right on the start line, yep. you start coming up. Matt, mm -hmm. you are very close to Matt, he does not have a lot of room. No. Nope. I'm very close to Matt, I, so I have to ease away from Matt not to make contact, yep. and then Matt has to ease away from you. Yes. And so you actually have to be patient there as yellow. You right. you can't just come up and whack him and say, no. protest. Because you have to give room right. for not just this boat, but this right. other and boat so if Matt to have can't time to do react. that because of me, you can't really protest him until I he's given me the opportunity to keep clear. Oh, but I can protest everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Matt, usually what, I tell what, what chances are, am I going to have? <laughs> <laughs> because... I'm being curtailed from being able to right. sail the course yes. I want to sail. Matt's being constrained by you. Right. Well, no, you, you, right. By heading me up, you're pinching. That's not 
right. That's not proper. Well, well, we, we were. We hadn't started yet. Yeah, we were. We were and just stay, stay like it's normal. We were reaching, yeah. and you were coming up. The yeah. fact though is that I need time to turn up. Yes. He needs to give it to me, and you. So and you're actually in a very all. unfortunate position, and it's a little bit of toughies going on there, don't you think? Yeah. The, so the conversation is a time no. conversation. <laughs> if, if Eric comes up below you and says, "You have to head up." Right. And then he basically counts one. I usually count three. Three, yeah. right. And if I don't then, see a response, if there's no action, <laughs> yeah. then he can say protest. Yes. Really, at that point, because nobody's made any action move. No, I, I only talk to myself <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so he'll, but it, so I mean, while well, you're right, David, it's not an unlimited sort of. Oh, I can't really do anything because I have the guy ahead of me and the guy. At, or above me and the guy above me, he's not really listening. That's 20 seconds of conversation. So then how much time is not time? It's about three, 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 three or four seconds. There should yeah. be at least a discussion. I can't. Which he, is a fair amount of time. Matt should yeah. then hail David and say, I need to head up. You, no, you have to give me some room. So it's like dominoes. If there's, yeah. if there's no conversation, yeah. then David can say, I am protesting Matt. Right. Matt well, can then protest David. David, be, the windward boat is the totally keep clear boat. Right. So having reaching down along yeah. in the line, Say this is the starting line here. Yeah. And actually, we'll, we'll get into that when we get into starting. Yeah. So let's just keep moving forward. So who is wrong in that situation? I know I'm perfectly right. So <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you two to figure it out as to who is the more wrong. But I'm going to go with it was him. <laughs> okay. When you've got two boats sailing at each other, Blue can hunt up Luff, alter course, so long as they do it in enough time that Yellow can respond, either by tacking or pinching up themselves to get over. But once Yellow's crossing, Blue can't spin up and T-bone him. That's altering course intentionally prevent someone from keeping clear, it goes against blue. Wait, can't you, you can't change the course of <laughs> That's the old rules. No, you can, so long as there is room, the time to promptly respond and the space to do it in, you can hunt up. But there's got to be enough time for the other person get out of the way or go past you. If you're so close and they're pivoting on their center board or their keel and there's nothing they can do and you've spun up into them, you're wrong. If you had a wind shift where the wind just suddenly gave you a big lift and you now, you're just following the wind, you spin up into somebody, you're wrong. You altered course. But frequently too, sometimes too, as they're coming across, will say, hey, don't alter course, when, yeah. it's, when they're quite separated. Well, yellow will be yelling, hold your course. Right. Yeah, that isn't in the book. That's not, a, that's not <laughs> actually the That's a plea for mercy. Yeah. Or a hail, cross hold your course, or cross or tack. Right. Which is basically, hi, if you don't let me go by, I am going to face plant you. Right. So it's a different issue. If two boats are crossing, yellow is going to pass behind starboard, blue here, and blue turns down at them. So that way they have to now turn even harder immediately to avoid him. Blue's wrong again because they altered course on a boat that was trying to keep clear. Well, it's all timing. So all timing. And so that's all 14? Uh, no, that's uh, 16. 16 mm -hmm. Are you saying that that changed? No. No, it's never changed. Wait, I thought it was when, really when I get to the change parts, I'll say, and this is different. Well, no, no, no. You're yeah. describing a situation which I thought was already there. Yeah, it is. Wait, I thought it was always two boat lengths. No, two no. boat lengths was a requirement about two, two or 
three rules changes back. It's a suggestion that once you're within two hull lengths of another boat that you don't change course just in order to make sure that you're going to be safe from getting involved with 16, but it's no longer a requirement. Okay. So let's go into the starting area. We've got our start. And everybody's doing the usual mill around. <laughs> and cycling as typically we do. Usually the cycling's a little further over to this side. The racing starts at the preparatory signal. So unless you damage someone so that they can't race or they're impeded in how they race, you haven't committed a foul. We've changed our sailing instructions, uh, which is now about to get posted up to the web, because we use a two-minute signal. At a minute 30, that's your preparatory. So you've got the 30-second gap in there where everyone just has to avoid everybody else. But then at a minute 30, the rules kick in. When you're in a three-minute sequence, it's at two minutes. A five-minute sequence, it's at four minutes. At that point, the rules engage. Rule 25 has been changed. Now this is brand new. Um, race committee can now use shapes instead of flags. The reasoning is there's a number of events where because of like especially match racing and the like where people are directly upwind of the race committee when a flag goes up you can't see the flag until you get off the side that now they're allowing people to, in some places, shapes are just what they typically like to use. So it's now an option for the race committee that they can put that up. Um, before the start, there's no proper course. So you can establish from somebody from clear astern and luff them up, and you have to keep giving them room, and you can take them head to win. No issues, no problems. But you can't establish the overlap so close that they can't turn and can't keep clear. In a case like this, green's wrong. Well, you want to always keep track of how an overlap got established. Green came in from clear astern. He's luffing up four, luffing up four. The gun goes off. They have to immediately assume their proper course, which is to turn down to close hold on this side. On the other side of the page, we've got yellow, who's established from clear astern of blue. The gun goes off, and yellow luffs up. They're allowed to do that, because their proper course is to start. If they were down here and blue wasn't here, they would still be luffing up to make the line and then bearing off onto a close hold course. So when you're to windward of someone down here, you've got to be paying attention to that and anticipate that they're going to need the room and you're going to have to keep clear. Blue has to, so if yellow has an overlap on blue, yep. blue has to let them get to the mark. Has to let them get through. But, but, it's but not that an overlap like a mark, it's not, a, it's not, is that, not considered a mark at the start. Yeah. It is considered a mark at the start. Oh yeah, these both ends are marks. Okay. You can't force them. You cannot. You can't push force them. them to the wrong side of the starting pin, the starting mark. Because their proper course allows them to luff up. As soon as they get past and you're alongside here, they have to immediately go back down to a close hold but course because like they don't have luffing rights. Rule in effect at that. Point. No. Uh, that's what I mean. Like, it's not like a oh. traditional overlap. I got overlap at the three, but it's it's, it's, it's overlap at the start. Yeah. In the starting sequence, and it's just the of windward course. leeward. Yeah. Yep. And they can't. They couldn't have done that further up because they weren't going to try to clear the mark. Then yep. it would have been a foul can't because they can't yellow clear was trying. Stern. No, they, because before remember before the start, there isn't a restriction, so they could have luffed blue up earlier to try to start this way, 
they just happened to have gone like this and then turned up. Okay, and no, they were at, left. but after the start, if they're up here, like three couldn't have pushed four any further. He had no. to immediately go to okay, immediately to make close sure hold. I yes. I just want to make sure I yep. got that. And let them yeah. through. Yeah. Something new. But what, but what, what if you came not from Clarister? And you came in. Then you, you have complete rights and it's no okay. issue. Okay. If four shoots over the top of, gets hooked up on top of three, yeah. the gun goes off, three has complete luffing rights and okay. can put him straight up head to wind if he wanted to. Okay. It's all of how the overlap got established, which is why it's very important to pay attention to the people in the neighborhood as you're coming into the start and see where things are happening. It used to be that if the race committee hung an anti-barging mark off the back of the race committee, they'd have to define it. They don't anymore. So if the race committee has something attached to it, a mark boat, a float, and it's intentional, and it's not accidentally attached, that all becomes part of the mark. So what you can expect to see people who have really expensive race committee boats doing is hanging a mark <laughs> off the back of the boat. And now they're allowed to do that. They don't have to define it. It's intentionally attached, not accidentally attached, and therefore it's part of the mark. Has that changed the ground tackle rule? No. The anchor line for a race committee is still not part of a mark. So the anchor line for the race committee or an anchor line for a mark, if you hook it, you don't have a problem so long as you don't touch the mark. I usually have a problem. <laughs> Any questions on starting? From experience, I can adhere to that. <laughs> okay. Other things. I like to refer to Rule 22 as how to know when you're completely toast. You are toast when? You are sailing back to try to restart. You have to keep clear of everyone. If you are taking a penalty turn and other boats are sailing their proper course and you get in their way, you're toast. And now a slight change. So you pull up onto the line, you realize you're early. You back your sail and stop the boat. The way the rule was written before is if this boat is now going backwards as a result of backing their sail. So if there was current coming through here, they back their sail, they stop it. Now they're going backwards because of current. They could be theoretically protested for it. Now that's been cleaned up. You have to be moving backwards through the water for you to be have no rights and have to keep clear of boats that are moving forward. So that's a change. Uh, when you're toast but protected, if you capsize with your masthead in the water, you're okay. If you are aground, anchored, or assisting someone by trying to rescue them, you can do whatever you need to in that case, and you won't be protested for it. Other questions in the starting line, and shall we head up the course? <coughs> uh, yeah, Lindsay's like, move faster, move faster, I'm freezing. <laughs> okay. You have to move up. <laughs> uh, I, I, I was, you said that nice and low. We said proper course is the course you would sail in the absence of any other boat in order to sail as rapidly as possible. And that becomes really important when you're in going around the course. If we have two boats and this boat is constrained, he doesn't have luffing rights on blue, they can turn up so long as they cross around behind blue to sail behind her. That's okay, because you didn't force the other boat to uh, have to change its course. 
if this boat sails down, there's no restriction on this boat sailing down with her. She can come back to her proper course. This boat just has to keep clear and continue up. We talked about hunting up and down. If you get hit with a puff or a wind shift and you round up into a crossing boat, you're wrong because you broke rule 16. We also talked about tacking too close. You've got a very short time when you're vulnerable. Blue comes in, tacks in front of yellow. There has to be time for yellow, who is probably going to be moving faster while this boat's accelerating, to once this boat has completed her tack, to either avoid going up or down and not have a problem. I think I One of the issues it. that we regularly have is called the slam dunk. So starboard is coming across, port crosses below them, starboard tacks the cross, blue turns up. Yellow now is stuck because it's a leeward boat. But blue can't turn so fast and spin up into yellow. They can just try to put themselves into where yellow wants to be in order to break the slam dunk. But they can't really plow into them. A big change in the game for this year is room to tack in how it's worded and some of its constraints. So we have yellow and red Yellow's, excuse me, red's on a collision course with blue. They choose room to tack. They don't have to hail those exact words, but it's highly recommended. If blue is all the way out here and yellow and red calls room to tack, Yellow can say, no, you don't need room to tack. He's way the blaze is out there. Uh, no, they can't. When somebody hails room to tack, you only have two options. Tack immediately or hail you tack and then keep clear of the other boat. The way that rule uh, 20 has been rewritten, let me just flip to that. It starts out with when you cannot hail. When approaching an obstruction, a boat may hail for room to tack and avoid a boat on the same tack. So one, you have to have that boat there. However, she shall not hail if A, she can avoid the obstruction safely without making a substantial course change. So if blue was already by, she can't hail for room to tack. If she's sailing below close hauled, dialed down like so, can't call for it. And if the obstruction is a mark and the boat is, that is fetching it would be required to respond and change course. So if we have a mark, that let's say it's the end of a point of land or something, and this boat's making it and this boat isn't, they can't call for room to tack. So that helped clean that up so a bit. Just Eric, quickly, I mean, you made it look like the yellow boat would make it. Yes. What, is, what does four do? Do they just get smeared into the point of land? No, they have to bail out and duck. But if it's point of land, that can be a little crazy. Let's say it's a mark or a dock. Okay. It's a dock. Let's say it's a dock. Well, it has to be a mark. Well, let's. When the obstruction is also a mark, so like a point of land or a rock, mm -hmm. this boat is fetching it. Yep. This boat is not. Yep. They have to stop, slow okay. up. They gotcha. can't call for room to tack gotcha. in order to gain an advantage and then right. tack back around the mark. Okay. That's what I'm Which is the obstruction. They can stop. Yes. So in other words, you can. Keep in mind, you can stop. You can always stop. Can you back it up to where the, um, the starboard boat was up there and you said it's too late, you can't call it? 
starboard boat was up. The starboard boat has gone he's past. Oh, he's already passed. It's past. Red will not need to make a substantial alteration of course okay. in order to go past the obstruction because as blue goes by, they go by. So it's they're not supposed to hail. Isn't there a point where that uh, windward boat on port could have asked for um, rim to duck? If, and this is going to obstructions, which we'll get to in a little bit, but if this boat chooses to go to this side of it, they have to give the boats overlap with them to go through there as well. So let's go to where things are a little more identifiable. The red is going to need room to tack. They have to hail. They have to give the hail boat time to respond. The hail, the hail boat has to respond even if this boat is not entitled to room to tack. If you get hailed, you have to either tack or hail you tack and keep clear. You can protest them later, but you've got to respond. And this was done for safety. When the hail boat responds, the boat that started the whole thing has to tack as soon as possible. So you can't hail room to tack this guy tacks and sail for a boat length to get closer. <laughs> you have to tack as soon as possible. If this boat hails, you tack. The boat has to tack again as soon as possible, and this boat has to keep clear. And they can keep clear by either tacking, or if they feel they can make it, they get past. What's a little different now is that um, no, that's really not that. Sorry, I'm thinking the wrong section. Reading my lines out of sequence. <clears throat> now, a change in the rules was Rule 20 was originally written that there were only two boats. Red hails for room to tack. Yellow is able to keep clear of the obstruction. They could sail in front of it. But they've been hailed for room to tack. They can't tack because of green. Under the way the rules are now written, the hail has allowed to be passed up the chain. And this is a change. So now four has to ha hail early enough, red, excuse me, so that each of the boats in the chain can respond and react. So, room to tack, room to tack, you tack, bink, bink, much closer. You have to be looking further away and further ahead now. Can, can they ever say, like, if room, if four um, says, you know, room to tack, but two could make it, can he just say no and make the red duck? That's just no, do because that. what he can say is he has take to him out. He has to no, either. he has to respond. He's got two responses. Tacking immediately, hailing you tack, and then keeping clear as part of you tack. So if he's going to make it, he hails you tack. This boat tacks, he gets clear. He's kept clear, he's fine. But usually when a boat's that close and they're going to tack, don't they need like the windward boat to really go first? Sure can. So when it's a case like this, room to tack, room to tack, I've got to avoid contact. Oh, I see. I think that's just a personal thing, is that I always feel when you're really side by side that, never mind, I, I yeah. get it, I get the, it. The key thing is this boat is the one who's going to get tossed for not responding. Okay. okay. We have a mark. 
We've got the Starboard Parade coming in. Two boats coming in on port. Red Hails, room to tack. Okay, they tack. During, while Rule 20 is in place, Rule 18.2 is not. So there's not going to, until this, they both tacked or they both kept clear of each other, Mark Room doesn't come into the game. It's a subtle point, but it plays out a lot of times, especially in this scenario. Any other questions on room to tack and coming up into the mark? So let's go to the mark. We so have got to get one of these on the water. Okay. Mark room. <coughs> Rule 18 turns on when you're three hull lengths of the boat that's closer to the mark. They punch in, they're overlapped in a chain back. Four is entitled to mark room because yellow has tripped. 18 and they're all overlapped. They may not get it, but they're entitled to it. It used to be that mark room was the room needed to sail to the mark and then sail a proper course while at the mark, which led to go wide, round tight. That's gone. You now get room to sail to the mark and then round the mark. No proper course here. That's been taken away. So if you have a number of boats coming in, let's say yellow is our leeward boat, and they don't have luffing rights on blue, they can't take blue up, they have to sail to the mark and then round the mark closely. You have to have right of way in order to go gain that additional space. If you don't, or if blue is overlapped with another boat that it can't respond, you still can't do it. You have to go and let the, ch if you have luffing rights, you've got to, again, just like before, as we were discussing, you have to be able to luff everybody in order to do that. <clears throat> and if you don't have luffing rights, you have to sail straight to the mark and round the mark. Yeah, but would you have luffing rights if you're, if you're now in that inner circle? Isn't it now just sail to the mark anyway at that point? It's current. Under the old rules, it was sail to the mark and then a proper course at the mark, which would have allowed a boat, and they usually get protested for it, but that was one of the hole plugs that was come up with was to take out the proper course part of once you're at the mark to be able to sail a proper course around the mark. Now you can just sail to and sail around. So it's a bit different. So is that 18-1? Uh, 18. Oh, or they've changed so many things. And Wait, this so one didn't really change much. It was just how it got phrased because it's really not a change in 18, it's a change in the definition of mark room. So you can sail with proper course if you had that luffing rights? Yeah. Which means your leeward boat in addition to being inside the right of way boat who has luffing rights so you can get up and around. Yeah. It's a little nippy today. You would not have loving rights if you had gained that from clear astern? No. So if yellow had come in from clear astern of blue, 
they wouldn't have luffing rights. They can always sail to the mark and then tie it around the mark. You really got to know where you are. Well, left, left, oh, yeah. left and right you, a you want to take a break and warm up? <laughs> yeah, for the boat that's getting run, run over. That's all current. Why don't we take a five minute break? Everyone can get some coffee. <laughs> Just get warmed up and then a boat passes head to wind outside the zone and then turns, completes their tack inside the zone. That first part crossing head to wind outside it's going to be a tough thing to prove yeah. but you didn't tack inside the zone so that's a rather significant little gotcha that i hadn't thought of before and oh so you're saying Dave that Perry is inside that. the zone if even if you finish it in there no it's no. not no it's outside. you have to be inside the zone when, when you're you in the initiate. process of tacking Okay. So if you tack out here and now you complete and you're in the zone, you didn't tack within the zone. Since none of us can agree where the three boat lanes Yeah, is, it's, it's going to be a lovely argument. <laughs> Keep in mind too, I think some people, I think you're right, the three boat lanes thing, but then, I mean, I know you've done this seconds, you know, how, how many seconds away from the mark were you? Right. There's 30 seconds away from the mark. Yeah. How much wind? Exactly. And that's what you'll be asked in a protest. What was the wind speed? How many seconds? So, yellow clearly tacks inside the zone. Four comes up from behind them, chooses to go below them. Yellow has to keep clear and let four get to the mark. They tack. If yellow, if red now has to sail above close hull, they're wrong. <laughs> Another nifty thing. If he has to sail above them to avoid them? Yes. No, not just avoid. sail above, but go head to wind. No, no, just has to sail above close hull. Above close hull, that's right. What, I'm sorry, above close hull, not sail above. So we have blue and yellow coming in on port. Red's over standing a bit. They both pack and complete. Blue luffs up, luffs up yellow. Red has to go up. Red sailed above his proper course. Who's the correct victim? Well, they had completed their task. Well, I would Inside say, the zone. I would say uh, red is the yeah. victim. Yeah, red is the victim. No, no. I mean, I mean who's, who's going to who be? Who gets protested? Oh, blue. <laughs> Boats for blue? Both blue and yellow. Blue and yellow. Boats for yellow? Yep. Oh. I think yellow gets exonerated. So It goes against blue. Because what happened was when blue luffed up, they compelled yellow to break a rule in fouling red. Under the way the rule was written before, yellow was going to be the meat in the sandwich. Because they were the person who forced the other boat up above close hull. Now it can read back to the originator of the problem. So, uh, I'm sorry, Eric, that's just to clarify. So a lot of times, there's a light coming down towards the mark. Yeah, the there's the guys coming out of port and they do a, do a quick tack. Yep. Those quick tacks, if you have to avoid them, they're in penalty. They're wrong. Yep. They're wrong. If you have to sail have to above, above close hole. Hole. But, but not if you have to avoid them. If you're reaching down, right, yeah. to the mark. So no, I'm saying, where, where no, I'm just saying, if you yeah. have to go above, above close yeah. hole, they're wrong. If, but if you're four not having is to go reaching in, Blue tacked inside the mark, and they only have to come up to close haul. Yeah. No harm, no foul. Okay. So, but then, but then the other thing is, if that's, I mean, you can sometimes almost force the foul by if it's fairly close. If you have a doubt about it and you really do feel wrong, don't say you made me alter course. Luff up. 
and say, I had to go above closed halls with their team. And then, then the onus is on them to prove you wrong. I mean, you don't really want to get into, you know, yeah, the, that the kind of stuff. The phrase there but... is also called Hollywood. Yeah. And the reason <laughs> it's called Hollywood is this boat's reaching in. They really want to get the penalty on them, so they shoot themselves up head to win, right. yelling and screaming like crazy. Yeah, do you really need to do that? Really sort of pushing point. the point. You don't want to do it too many times. Okay. So um, that, that new change, is that part of a, a segment of Rule 18? Is that what it is? Yeah, 18.3. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Wait, you have to go over it again. Bob came back. Yeah. <laughs> and we know Bob's going to do that. Yeah, Bob's going to do that. Really, that. That really isn't a rule change. It's just because of the definition of zone and how things work, is it just causes change. The rule itself only got rewritten in one small part. With the zone. Um, where if a boat becomes overlapped inside of a boat, so this boat's coming into it. We'll get to this when we get down to um, the Lillard Park and Jai Park, because that gets a little bit different. Mm. Okay. One of the things that got rewritten in Part C, Section C, is exoneration. When a boat is sailing within the room or mark room to which she's entitled, it's starting to get wind. How different. Um, under a rule of Section C, she shall be exonerated if, in an incident with a boat that was required to give her that room or mark room, she breaks the rule of Section A, port, starboard, windward, lowward, ahead, astern, rule 15, getting rights, or rule 16, altering course, or she is compelled to break rule 31. So if you're sailing to the mark and this boat bears off into you and forces you to hit the mark, you get exonerated. You were compelled mm -hmm. into hitting the mark. You hadn't planned on it. You're entitled to mark room. This boat loves you too early to make the rounding. Bang, you hit it. You get the get out of jail free card. They have to go away and go take their penalty. But you have to protest. <clears throat> Exoneration isn't a complete get out of jail free card, however. Um, you have to do everything reasonable to avoid collisions. You have to do everything reasonable to not hit things. <clears throat> One of the things that we regularly have at the Windward Mark is the race committee will be signaling a change of course. And that's been slightly changed. It's been cleaned up. So if the next mark, instead of being dead downwind, is moved to the left, they have to put up a green, hang on, green triangle or a red rectangle. So it's a red rectangle to go this way or a green triangle to go that way. And it actually has to be a rectangle or a triangle because they originally just said put up red or green and then we discovered that red and green is the most common form of color blindness. <laughs> so now we've got to have a shape. It's, it's not But then optional. how do you figure out what the, what the oh, it, red ring. <clears throat> and then there's also the plus or the minus if the leg is going to be shortened or longer. Any other questions about getting around the weather mark? Okay, let's go on to a run. Well, actually, yeah, there is something else. So, Tracy, you'll remember this. <laughs> but we're not going to name names. I've forgotten it. You had to Just remind initials. me, huh? <laughs> we're not so, naming names, Eric. <laughs> Except for Tracy. She always well, remembers when around. Eric's in the wrong. So it's an example of good sailing. Tracy's an example of good sailing. They're entitled to mark room. <laughs> Only so long as they need mark room. Once they get clear, it's no longer there. 
So if you have a boat that comes around, gets clear with a trailing boat that's on starboard, and now they jive to port, they don't have any protection because they're no longer entitled to mark room and the two boats aren't overlapped. So if you're going to come around to mark and jibe, you have to make it a jibe as part of your rounding. When you come around to mark and there's a port tacker coming in, you're allowed to turn down to your proper course, which is to sail down to the next mark. If you see that there's going to be a collision, you have to alter course in order to avoid the collision. And this is still the keep clear boat. So it's just, it makes it even a little tougher the way things are written now for the, under the mark room rule, for the port tacker to really get in there. So you've got to be paying a little more attention. <clears throat> also, Eric, Eric, isn't it a nice piece of advice if you're not too sure of these rules and you're a port tacker, you're just, keep in mind you're just going for coffin corner and you probably have no business being there. Yeah. It, it's, what Dave Perry puts in his book is that the only safe way to approach these days is to come in at four hull lengths out on port, so that way you only have to deal with port starboard not get involved with anything else. Unless you're the first boat, in which case, don't worry about it.